So let me stop waving my hands here, and, and now that you understand scaling, I can do some simple examples to show you why we can combine two matrices into one and get the same result. Uh, it's the same as if we applied the matrices individually to the vertices and then went from there. In fact, just to prove that, let me go down here, and we shall apply these one by one, and you'll see that the result is same. I, is the same. So what I'm going to do is say transform, well, you know what, all we have to do is grab this, paste it twice, but we're going to replace this with this over there. Instead of saying op times verts, I am going to say rotator, and then I am going to say translator. So we'll first hit each vertex, the original vertex, we'll hit with the rotator, store that and transform verts, and then we're going to take that result, hit it with the translator, and store that back into transform verts as well. And you'll see that the result is the same, we get the same behavior. I'm going to right arrow, left arrow, right arrow, up arrow, left arrow, up arrow, you see our ship is moving just fine. But Obviously, this is not ideal code-wise to say, hey, hit it with this, store it here, then hit it with this, and restore it there. Ideally, we have what we had originally, where we just say, you know what? Hit it with this one single matrix. Don't do all those multiplications twice for two matrices. Just do it once with this single matrix. Hit the vertex and store the result there. Now, let's try to see if we can understand why that works, okay? Maybe you look at it and say, yeah, that just makes sense, but, but I, don't, I don't want it to just make sense. I want to I want you to understand why that works and see the mechanics of it. Let me pull this tool back up, and we're just going to work on one vector here, and you notice I have 1.5 and 2, so it's 1.5, oh, this is, sorry, let me bring this down to a 1. Uh, it's 1.52, so 1.52, and then our basis vectors here is 1, 0, 0, 1, um, nothing special there. All right, and the reason why I'm doing one vector is, you know, if we have multiple vectors, whatever I do uh, to one vector is the same as doing it to all the vectors, so that's what we're going to do is just try to learn this with one vector, and then it makes sense that, yeah, you know, to apply it to an infinite amount of vectors, it's the same result. Okay. Uh, let's grab this uh, part of the basis vector here. I'm going to stretch it out to a 2. How's that going to change things here? Hopefully this is a, a mind-numbing review at this point. But I'm going to grab this, stretch it out to a 2. How's that going to change here? We're going to scale the x by 2. Pause the video, think about it. Okay, I pretty much gave you the answer, didn't I? I'm going to scale the x by 2. So we're 1.5 out right now. We're going to go another 1.5. We should end up right here. So let's do it. Move it out by two, and there we go, a simple scaling operation. Now notice we have our basis linearly combined with our uh, input vector here, and out comes a resulting vector. So this is, you can think of this as a transformation matrix, if you want. We're transforming this result, and we get, or this input, and we get this output vector, this 3, 2, if you would. And, and just because I want to. And now, if you looked at the Khan Academy video, you saw the algebraic way of multiplying a matrix, which is fine, but I'm going to show you the linear algebra way of doing it, which is, I've shown this to you a thousand times. Hopefully, this is review. It's 1.5 times this, this basis vector. Okay, 1.5 times this basis vector plus 2 times this basis vector, and that gives us this result, again, 3, 2. All right, hopefully that was a simple review. Well, what happens if I take yet another transformation matrix, and let's just make one up here. I'm going to say, uh, oh, let's go thinner ink. Thinner ink, 1.5. It's not very thin, is it? I don't think I chose that thinnest one. 1. 1.5 and 0. And then on our second basis vector here, we shall drop a 2. Okay, again, we took this matrix, applied it to this vector, got this result. So I'm going to further take this result, 3, 2, draw it here. 
And again, same kind of math. We're going to apply this basis, sort of this transformation to this input vector here, and let's see what our output is. So uh, again, that's going to be 3 times the first vector, 3 times 1.5, and 0, 0, that's a 1, I promise, uh, plus 2 times the second basis vector, 0, 2. All right, what's the result of that going to be? Well, let's just work that in our heads. Uh, 3 times 1.5 is 4.5. Okay, actually it's 4.5 plus 2 times 0, which is 0, so 4.5. And then uh, 3 times 0 is 0, so that doesn't matter, and plus 2 plus 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So let's now draw this result, and I'm going to do it in black. Let's do it a little thicker ink, and there's a trick I learned. Down mouse, right mouse button, so I have both mouse buttons down. I'm going to move over to 4, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. 0.5, up to 4, so right here. And then I'm going to let go of the right mouse button, or I'm going to click, <laughs> and it draws a straight line for me. A little hack one of my friends showed me, but it's pretty awesome. Okay, I get a nice straight line. All right, so just review, we took our original inputs here, multi or applied it, or linear did a linear combination against the, the basis vectors here, and out popped this this result, man, I'm making a mess of the screen, am I not? This result, so that's 3, 2, and then I further hit it with a second transformation that does further scaling. It scales the x again by 1.5, and it scales the y by 2, and we took a result, and that's the input with this transformation did the work, and now we have 4.54, 4. so it's 4.54. 4. Um, let me pause the video and erase all this junk up at the top. Now remember in code, if I bring up my code again, uh, we are combining the two matrices into one operation. And now let's do that back here and see what that really means. I'm going to take our first input matrix. Let's go red. Let's go thinner. Uh, the first input matrix, 2, 0, 0, 1, so there's our two basis vectors, if I would, or two vectors in our transformation matrix. That's a good word for it, huh? transformation. We are transforming our inputs and getting outputs, so to say. That's, that's our first transformation matrix. Let's take the second transformation matrix here, 1.5 and 2, 1.5, come on, 5, 5. Uh, 0 for that component of that basis vector, and then 0, 2, 0, 2, there we go, and now we're going to multiply these two matrices and get one matrix out. Now we can, this, this is the part where I was waving my hands before, I mean I could do it and we'd get the same result and you'd see it and whoopie doo, but, but this is what I want you to think about, what does this really mean? Okay, I'm taking two matrices, going to multiply them, what does that really mean? Well, again, I'm going to think like a linear algebra list. And I know I keep saying that word linear algebra. By no means do you need to know much about linear algebra at all to make to understand this stuff. In fact, I'm trying to give you a foundation to just show you the bare basics. But I, I want you to just look at this and think about what does this mean? What, what does this really mean? I just Let's just not multiply them. Let's look at it and say, well, what, what, what does this really mean? So pause the video and think about it. What, what does it mean? Okay, let me show you here. Uh, remember, get this off the screen. Uh, here before we had this matrix, and we apply it to this vector, and out comes this result. We take that same matrix, hit it with this vector, or we hit this vector with that matrix, and out comes this result, and then we did the same matrix, vector, result, matrix, vector, result, so on and so forth. And, and then we apply all these operations here to to all the vectors, right, one by one. But we could have easily just taken all these input vectors, 
slapped them into a big long matrix, okay, like so, and then overload the operator to multiply these matrices together, and and then just interpret the individual uh, output results as vectors again, and then we just graph them, and we get the exact same result. So going back to what we had before, right here, uh, that again, these are if it helps, and I hope it does help, these are our transformation or change of basis, if you would. We're changing the basis vectors, and then we're applying this to these two vectors, and out will pop two resulting vectors, like so. And so it's like this is a change of basis. We're changing the basis on this result. But if I apply my previous change of basis, to my second change of basis, then it's like I'm <laughs> change of basis, changes the basis, and then I apply that to my original input, and that's the same as what we did before where we just said matrix times vector, get the result, and then further apply the second change of basis or transformation matrix to it, and then get a result. All right, well, let's just do that. We're going to change these basis vectors here by this change of basis and get a resulting output matrix. And let's see if I can do this in a way. Um, you know, I think, let me bring up a background that's nice and white and so that we can do our math without the lines in the background, so to say. Let me get rid of that for now. Okay, same thing we've done before. All right, here's our input vector we're going to hit it with this matrix and out will pop a result we'll put our two by two resulting matrix right here so 1.5 times this it's 1.5 times that first basis vector plus zero times our second basis vector All right but zero times that's pretty much nothing All right so then What's 1.5 times 2? That's 3. And then 1.5 times 0 is nothing. All right, so our first resulting full transformation uh, matrix is 3, 0. And then we just need to do the same thing here with this second vector here. We need to change this basis vector by this change of basis vector. Wow, that's a... I'm saying basis a lot, am I not? I had to sit and listen to a lawyer one time, and he, and he says, basis, basis, he said it 10,000 times, and I just came away confused. So I hope this isn't too confusing. We're just doing the same thing we've been doing forever and ever. We're just linearly combining vectors to other vectors. Uh, okay, so 0, 0, this 0, times this basis here, and then 2 plus 2, linear combination 2, times that second one. Okay, well 0 times that, that's, that's nothing, right? I can just get rid of that. So then what's 2 times 0? Well, 2 times 0 is 0, and then 2 times 1 is 2. All right, so that is the result. Uh, get rid of this, we're done with this. That is the result of taking this input matrix, combining it with this, or this change of basis matrix, combining it with this change of basis matrix into one, and now apply this result to our original input vector. Okay, we didn't, no, we're no longer going to have this intermediate result that we have to apply the second change of basis matrix to. We're, we're going to combine them into one, which we did, and then apply it to the original input, and the results should be the same. So let's do that. Um, God, all the stuff I need to. Oh, what should I? What should I do? Let's let's say three, zero, zero, two. Okay, I've taken our matrix over here and I've written it over there. Let me erase this off the screen, and now then our original input vector. Uh, 1.5 and 2. Oh, and then same math as always. 
That's going to be 1.5, 1 1.5. 3, 0, plus 2, uh, 0, 2, 0, 2, which will equal, uh, okay, 1.5 times 3, 4.5, 0, plus, that's a 0, uh, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 2 is 4, okay, and that's our resulting vector, ooh, this should look familiar, 4.5, 4, four. 4.54, 4. where have we seen that before, where have we seen that, oh, that's right, 4.5, 4, .5, four. <laughs> gives us the exact same result. Okay, so I know this video is a little long and drawn out, but I wanted to really drill home drill home the fact that, hey, we can combine the two matrices together, and it's the same as applying the matrix separately to the individual inputs. In fact, a better way to look at this is saying, hey, we're going to change this, we're going to take this rotator matrix, the two vectors in the rotator matrix, and we're going to transform them by the translator. Okay, does that make sense? We're going to take our transformation, our rotation transformation, and we're going to further transform those vectors, the vectors stuffed in this rotator matrix, and uh, by the translator, may, tr by the <laughs> vectors in the translator, and then that gives us this result, which is the rotator transformed by the translator, and then I can further take that and apply it to the individual verts, and it's the same as if I applied these uh, two separate transformation matrices separately. Okay, Whew, what a video.